Mamma mia, cultural shocks you will definitely have when you visit Italy. Buongiorno ragazze, I'm Anna and welcome, or for some of you, welcome back to my channel. Currently I'm living between Rome, Norway and London. I treat Rome like my third home, but some things were absolutely shocking for me when I came here for the first time. So to prepare you for your next trip to Italy, let me show you 10 fascinating cultural shocks you will certainly have when you visit Italy. First, appetizer before main course. Always. Oh my god! Just imagine, you're going to the restaurant with a group of people, it's like six or seven of you, and you're so hungry, the only meal you had today was your breakfast, which was two cups of coffee and one cornetto. You feel like you're ready to eat the host. I am so hungry! But you know that the portions are quite big and you're just dying to jump on that pizza or pasta and suddenly someone from your group is ordering an appetizer like antipasti or calmare fritti i used to do the same all the time in london i'm not a big dinner person so instead of one big main course i'm usually ordering two starters and while my friends enjoying their proper meal main course i'm just having my two starters but it will not work in Italy. The waiter will only bring that pasta or pizza main course when appetizer plates, starter plates are collected. So in Italy, when you go to the restaurant in a group of people, you must ask all of them in advance if you are having starters or not. Otherwise, you will be waiting for your pizza forever. Number two, pizza romana and pizza napoletana. Before I came to Italy, pizza was pizza for me. And to be honest with you, they looked quite the same to me. More than that, sometimes I was having my pizza with pineapple. Not you again. It does taste like Kit Kat. What? My stomach! What the hell is this? Right. But when I came to Italy, I found a huge difference. The crust. There are two types of pizza in Italy. Pizza Romana and Pizza Napoletana. The first one, Pizza Romana, coming from Rome, has a very, very thin crust. Very small one, like almost nothing. My favorite one. But there is also Pizza Napoletana with a very large and big crust of dough. By the way, did you know that pizza was actually invented in Napoli? Specifically, the baker, Raffaele Esposito, got the credit for making the first ever pizza pie. However, lots of historians are arguing with that, saying that lots of uh, street vendors in Napoli were selling similar um, pies to pizza long before that. The most traditional pizza napoletana is margarita and marinara. It's a very simple pizza dressed only with tomato sauce, virgin olive oil, garlic and oregano. Do you like this one? Or would like to know more about Italy and other countries? Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Ah, and yeah, I want to see your thumbs up right now. Thumbs up! More is yet to come. Next will be Norway and after Norway, is going to be Russia. So if you're curious about other cultures, click that little cute bell to remind you when my next video is out. I can't wait to see you again. Number three, Scarpetta. Mamma mia. Mamma mia? Mamma mia. I didn't even know this word before I came to Italy. And guys, I'm not sure that it's 100% applicable to all the regions in Italy, but I know for sure that it's 100% normal in Rome. So, scarpetta. The act at the end of your dinner for which my parents would ask me to leave the table immediately. It's much easier to show you. When you finish your dinner in Rome, at home or even at the restaurant, you can take a little piece of bread and just finish all the leftovers of the sauce on your plate with this bread, like scrub it, and after that you're eating that bread. Shockingly, but it's a really good compliment to the chef 
or just the person who cooked your dinner. If you see the customer in Sicilia or in Sardinia doing scarpetta in the restaurant, this person is 99% from Rome. Guys, who are watching me now from other regions of Italy, is it a common practice in your region? Are you doing the same? Please drop me a comment down below. I'm so curious to know. Milano, please don't comment at all. Your opinion will be so close to my parents' opinion. How dare you leave the table immediately? Number four, no pasta or pizza cooked at home for dinner every day. And this was really shocking for me when I made some friends in Italy and I started getting invitations for dinner. Well, okay, those invitations were coming mainly from Rome or from Milano. If it's the same in your region, guys, please let me know also in the comments down below. I was hoping that I would come for dinner and I will see a huge saucepan of traditional homemade pasta or a huge traditional pizza made for six people. But no, it's not like this really. I've never noticed any dinner in Italian home with lots of pasta or lots of pizza. Usually Italian dinner I notice contains lots of fish or meat, roasted or fresh vegetables, lots of fresh salad and some interesting greens like spinachi or cicoria. The last one, I don't even know how to say it in English. I'll drop it right here. Not really naughty stuff. And as the dessert, I was usually offered cucumero. Told you, it was happening in Rome or just any other fruit. So maybe this is why Italians tend to stay so thin and healthy because they don't usually eat pizza and pasta every day for dinner. Number five, riposo. Especially in smaller places. Happened to me in Palau, in Sardinia. I had pretty much the same experience in Matera, Basilicata, and also Siracusi, Sicilia, where everything was closed from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. All the businesses were shut. The streets looked so deserted, like no people, no cars. It was a little bit scary at the beginning, but after that, I got used to it. Maybe riposo is one of the reasons why people in Sardinia tend to live much longer than the average life expectancy in the world. Being one of those blue zones of the world, there are some areas in Sardinia where people tend to live for longer than 100 years. Does Riposo help? Guys, what do you think? Drop me a comment down below. And also, if you're enjoying this video so far, please smash that, smash that like button. It will help my little channel to grow even faster. Thank you so much for this, guys. And if you like all the things I'm telling you here, consider subscribing to my channel. Six, Italian bars. Italian bar is not a cocktail bar. I love this one. Guys! Chin chin. Chin chin, guys. Chin chin, guys. Chin chin. It was the first time I came to Italy for my business meetings. And before we start, one of my Italian colleagues told me, shall we go to the bar? And I was like, what? What? It's 9 a.m., man. What bar? And that point of time, I understood that the bar in Italy, it's not the same bar we have in mind in England or in the United States where we go after work to grab a drink. Here in Italy, the bar, bar, is the place where you're getting your morning coffee from. So it's a coffee shop in Italy, but instead of calling them a coffee shop, they're calling it un bar. Shocking. Shocking. What's even more shocking? Let's carry on with the subject of Italian bar. Number seven, coffee at the bar compared to coffee at the table. About seven years ago, I was coming to Italy for my business meeting and being a proper London girl, when I'm ordering a coffee, at the coffee shop in the morning, for me, it was only two ways of having my morning coffee. First, on the go, in a carton cup. By the way, don't ask in Italy to put your coffee in a carton cup. Yes, Italians don't usually drink their coffee from a carton cup on the go. Furthermore, Starbucks doesn't exist in Italy. It's just not here. There is no Starbucks, not even one. McDonald's, yeah, 
plenty of those but Starbucks still didn't make it to Italy anyway the second way of having my morning coffee in London was to take it from the counter bring it to the table and enjoy it seated Italians traditionally having their morning coffee right at the bar yes standing right there of course you can also take your coffee to the table in Italy but first it's not a traditional way to have it and second you will need to pay a service charge which will make you pay twice the price for that coffee number eight ordering latte in Italy same happened to me about seven years ago when I asked vanilla latte in a bar and that look the barista gave to me what thank god i was with my italian friend that time who laughed at me at first of course but after that he explained to me that latte means milk in italian and when you order latte especially vanilla latte it means that you want to have a glass of milk which for italians is weird for me it was just shocking no latte number nine no spoon when you eat pasta that's a funny one actually when i moved to england which happened earlier than i visited italy for the first time i saw many people having their pasta at home or at the restaurant helping themselves with a spoon i even saw it in the movie quite respected movie i have to tell you like sort of documentary and it was totally wrong again after that i was explained by italians that you're supposed to eat your pasta with fork only you need to put your pasta around that fork and help yourself a little bit with a plate and that's the right way to eat your pasta in italy and never ever guys cut your pasta in italy with a knife if any italian witnesses such a cruel behavior you will be responsible for their heart attack. Number 10, pizza etiquette. It was also so shocking for me, but you must respect it here. First, you cannot ask the waiter in Italy to cut your pizza. You will get it in full and you will have to cut it yourself. When I asked why, the reaction was, what? What? Are you a kid to cut your food for you? Number two, the only alcoholic beverage you can order with your pizza is beer. I thought it's Italian classic to have pre-cut pizza with a glass of wine, but no, you have to cut your pizza yourself and wine or any other alcoholic beverage cannot go with it. Only beer. Ah. Guys, have you been to Italy? What was the most shocking fact or cultural shock you experienced here please drop me a comment down below i can't wait to discuss it with you thank you so much for watching this video if you enjoyed it please show me your thumbs up stay safe be happy and get ready to travel the world i love you so much guys can't wait to see you next week ci vediamo ragazze a presto yeah.